Alex Hua Tian, the first Chinese equestrian eventer to compete in the Olympics. He remains the only equestrian athlete to represent China. Earning the nickname One in a Billion, and despite disappointment at being unseated in Beijing eight years ago, he's ready to go again in Brazil. He was the youngest ever event rider in Olympic in history. Rio, flying the flag solo for equestrian in China. And Don Janeiro, but he's flying in it. And he's done a very good job producing Hatian's well, move to, to, to the UK leads to him winning a medal. The Chinese rider has built his own training in China. Alex Wang Eventing is not just about a series of numbers. What really matters is the story behind the sport. So the sport of eventing is a really special sport. It has been in every Olympic since 1920 and it has a really deep history. It is genuinely the sport of kings and queens. We are very lucky to have Alex Hua Tian, who is the youngest equestrian ever to compete at the Olympics as well as being China's first equestrian Olympian in history. You know, for us, the horse is always the most important part of the equation. Three-day eventing is, is one of the three equestrian sports at the Olympic Games. We call three-day eventing the ultimate sport and the ultimate partnership because the horse and the rider and the partnership have to be perfect in the dressage, the cross-country and the show jumping, all three phases, and the best combination, the best partnership wins. Qualifying for the Olympics is not an easy thing, and Alex has already participated in both the 2008 and 2016 Olympics, despite he's just 26 years old. 2008 Olympic Games will, will never happen again. It was amazing. And I have so many amazing memories. Most amazing memory is just your sense of arriving there and feeling that you're just one small drop in this massive Olympic movement. And you, you realize how, how much bigger this ideal, the Olympic movement, is than just one athlete or even all the athletes. Chinese public, the audience in China, were very much whipped up into this frenzy of excitement around the Beijing Olympic Games. And, and in that frenzy, there was this one story about a young boy competing for China on a white horse. The whole of China will be willing him on, as indeed the whole of Britain. 2008 Beijing Olympic Games was an incredible memory for me. It was, it was completely overwhelming. I was 18 years old, I was very young, um, I had a wonderful horse called FBW Chico and in terms of an Olympic experience, being home Olympic Games was exceptional. It was incredible. I was there to witness Alex's performance at the 2008 Olympics. I was very nervous at that time. Suddenly, the crowd burst into cheers and made a wah sound. I knew Alex was ready to play. I saw Alex go past me perfectly. I felt relieved when I saw his performance. Since it was my first time to hear such loud hooray from the audience, I was worried about Alex's horse unconsciously. I didn't know whether she would perform well in this loud noise. We went back to our room after Alex rode past us. But we couldn't see Alex on the live broadcast. A few minutes later, the presenter said that Alex fell off from his horse at the eighth fence. I didn't know what to do at that moment. And I went to the finish line and I saw Alex with a flushing face. Um, and for me it was a, a really devastating uh, moment, uh, not just for me personally but for all of my team that helped me and had shed blood, sweat and tears to help me and, and help China get to this, this moment of history. I asked Alex what went wrong, he said it was all his fault. And really I felt very responsible for that because it was, it was my mistake and the consequences were really uh, because of me. 
You in the way, there were hundreds of media journalists waiting for him outside, and Alex went to talk to the press by himself. That was Alex's first performance at the Olympics. He didn't blame his horse when he spoke to the press after he fell. I was impressed by his brave behavior and sense of responsibility. He was only 18 years old, but he told the press it was all his fault, and he wanted to know if the horse was injured. 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing was was a very big moment. It. it it was really my dream and it was a fairy tale. Unfortunately at the time, uh, the fairy tale didn't finish with a happy ending. Um, I fell off at Fence 8, which most, most people remember. Most Chinese media did not pay attention to him after he fell. They only cared about the gold medals. So it was not worth it to give him that much attention anymore. Falling for, for us, for most of the people in the sport, is not a big deal. But in China, it was a big deal because they didn't really understand that this is part of the sport. And I think it was also very interesting. It caused a lot, a lot of young Chinese people then got in touch with Alex to encourage him and to say and to discuss this whole issue of dealing with disappointment. And I think it was a, bit of a little bit of a catalyst, possibly even more eventful than if he had meant it being hugely successful and got a medal there. So I think over the last eight years and over the last 10, 15, 20 years, China in, in history has been incredibly focused um, and probably unhealthily focused on simply gold medals, on, on the Chinese flag flying the highest um, and being number one in, in, in the world. In the past, for China, the only purpose for participating in the Olympics was to honor the country. All nations felt very excited when Chinese athletes got a gold medal. During that time, the whole nation celebrated together for a gold medal taken by Chinese athletes. You could see the flag of China everywhere on the street, and people talked a lot about the Olympics and gold medals with each other. However, if the athlete was not able to win the gold medal in the Olympic Games, that would be a disaster. It is known to all that Li Ning won three gold medals in the 1984 Olympics, so the whole nation had very high expectation for him in the 1988 Olympics. Unfortunately, he did not win any gold medal at that Olympics, and he was verbally attacked by people in the airport. His windows were even smashed it by his fans when he came back, and he was threatened by those people. Apparently, people at that time could not tolerate athletes who did not win. For me, and for my family, and for my team, it's always been really important that we, we never went down that road. I was never going to be able to live up to expectations of the Chinese public if they felt that I was a gold medal winning contender. Um, so many other sports is only winning losing and that's it. With equestrian sports there's so much more about it, there's so much history, there's so much culture, the background to, to a lot of athletes is, is so much more interesting than, than, than winning a gold medal. How did they get there? Why did they get there? Why do they have a huge passion for the sport that they compete in. People think equestrian sport is very glamorous, but actually equestrian sport is very interesting. We treat our horses like they're our Ferraris. Uh, the slightest scratch, the slightest ache, we've got them massaged, we've got them beautifully fed, we've got them beautifully cleaned, their stables or everything, and then when you look at us, we treat ourselves like tractors. Eight years means a lot for an athlete. There are so many interesting things about his growth in personalities, responsibilities, and in the relationship between the horse and the rider. Unfortunately, most of Chinese media and audience still focus on the moment he fell from his horse in 2008. However, over the last eight years, I've, I've learned to thank that moment because I don't think I'd be here now. I don't think I'd have qualified for the, the Rio Olympic Games. I don't think I would have worked as hard. Wouldn't have been so motivated to get back here again and to prove that we can do it, that China can do it. This time, we went to Rio for the Olympics. To be honest, I felt very relaxed. I went into the riders' tent where there were 19 screens broadcasting the competition live. So the atmosphere in the tent was quite intense. All the competitors were in the tent watching in silence. Just before Alex's turn, he suddenly stood up and said, I'm going to get something to eat. I felt really relaxed when I heard that, because 
it is only a special type of person who can talk about eating so close to the competition. Then I realised he was in a good form, which made me relaxed as well. Alex said his horse, Don, has tried his best in this game, and this horse really had no energy left at the end, because he really had given everything to Alex. Despite the fact Don was very tired, he took off early when jumping the last fence. His jump was probably 6 to 7 metres, and maybe the widest jumping distance during the competition. So after that jump, Don's stamina was virtually non-existent. I hope to be competitive. You know, I'm eight years on from, from Beijing. Um, I'm eight years more experienced. And so I feel in a much better place than I, perhaps I was in then. Having said that, you know, I'm still a long way from where I want to be one day in the future. And whether or not that I will be able to transfer what I'm doing into a medal at Rio, is probably unlikely to be honest. But for me, what I'm proud about is qualifying, representing China, and, and being a pioneer for the sport in Rio games. This sport is an addiction because you are in pursuit of perfection. You are looking not for that perfect performance, you're looking for that perfect partnership with a horse. You're looking to develop perfection. There's an old Chinese saying, Bai Ma Han Ru. It means a pure and brave horse does not need any colorful embellishments. His true character will speak for itself. Alex is very much his own person. We have never pressured him to produce results. And what he has achieved has been based on his own talent and a huge amount of blood, sweat and tears. For us, eventing is not about gold medals and championships. It is not about results. For us, eventing is not just about 365 days a year, seven days a week, training in all weathers. Nor is it about the 23 dressage movements, 45 solid obstacles on the cross country, or the 12 flimsy jumps in the show jumping. It's not just a series of numbers. What really matters is the story behind the sport. It is the relationship between rider and his horses. It's four years, eight years, or a lifetime following a dream and always growing in experience. <laughs>